Hey y'all, it's Cody from Sleepopolis, and this video is all about jet lag. We're gonna talk about what it is, what its symptoms are, how to treat it, and much, much more. And you can also go to sleepopolis.com for full articles on jet lag, the best travel pillows, and guides on how to catch Z's in the airport. But before you do that, make sure to fasten those seatbelts and put your tray tables in an upright and locked position because we're ready to take off. Now that was a doozy of a flight. Oh, if you've ever taken a long flight over multiple time zones like the one I just took, you know exactly how I'm feeling right now because you've likely experienced jet lag, a temporary sleep disorder in which the body's internal clock falls out of sync with its surroundings. So before we can even begin to understand what jet lag is, we first have to learn about the internal clock. Now, every individual has an internal clock, sometimes referred to as a master clock, which is powered by approximately 20,000 nerve cells in the suprachiasmatic nucleus in the hypothalamus. These nerve cells use a variety of different external cues, such as daylight or meal times, to send signals of alertness and sleepiness to the body. So, if you maintain a fairly consistent routine, your body's gonna get used to the schedule and will establish a strict set of internal rhythms to support it. So you can kind of think of your master clock as the maestro of an orchestra, who knows precisely how to conduct all of her different players to keep things running in perfect harmony. Now imagine how your maestro might feel if you kept the same players but gave them all different instruments and sheet music. Yeah, she'd be pretty confused and it would take her a minute to rehearse and learn the new movements. And that's kind of what's going on in your body when you travel over multiple time zones in quick succession. If you're a New Yorker visiting Tokyo, for example, when you first arrive, your body is still gonna be responding to cues from Eastern Standard Time, even though you're quite literally 14 hours ahead in Japan Standard Time. That's why you might feel sleepy while other folks are up and ready to start their days, or why you might wanna devour a full course meal at two in the morning. Thankfully, the effects wear off once your body acclimates to the new schedule, and that's why jet lag is technically categorized as a temporary sleep disorder. And it's a highly common one at that, with over 200,000 cases reporting in the United States annually. So what exactly does jet lag feel like? Well, as with any disordered sleeping, the symptoms can really vary from person to person. But some of the most common ones include disturbed sleep, most commonly in the form of insomnia and excessive sleepiness, daytime fatigue, especially at times in which you're usually alive and alert, difficulty focusing or concentrating on the task at hand, stomach issues ranging from constipation to nausea and diarrhea, and finally, a generalized sense of huh, powered by confusion and fogginess. It's worth noting that jet lag symptoms aren't always gonna be so extreme, especially if you're only traveling a few hours ahead or behind your normal time zone. A general rule of thumb is that the further ahead you go, the worse your symptoms are gonna be because you're advancing your internal clock as opposed to delaying it. And you can kind of think about it like daylight savings time, how it's usually easier for folks to fall back and gain an hour of sleep than to spring forward and lose one. All right, so now that we've talked about the symptoms, let's talk about a few possible treatments for jet lag. So though there's no way to fully cure jet lag, there are a few tricks you can employ to soften its worst effects. Number one, you wanna get out into the daylight as soon as possible. And while it's totally fine to catch a quick cat nap after your flight, I highly recommend getting out into the sun so that your body can start picking up on the new cues of the environment. Number two, you're gonna to wanna to hydrate a ton on the plane. Fatigue is directly linked to dehydration, so make sure you're guzzling a ton of the watery good stuff on the flight over. Number three, acclimate to the new schedule as soon as you can. This may mean eating when you're not hungry or staying up way past your bedtime. You know, it's gonna be annoying in the short term, but it's gonna help immensely in the long term. And finally, if you can, try to book a flight at night that arrives at your destination in the morning. That way you can sleep on the flight and hit the ground running when you arrive. This isn't gonna to totally mitigate jet lag, but it will definitely help to shorten the effects. All right, so I'm gonna wrap up this jet lag video with some of the most common questions we get at Sleepopolis about jet lag. All right, number one, what is the feeling of jet lag? So in my opinion, it kind of feels like grogginess on hyperdrive. When I've experienced jet lag, my body felt super heavy, my mind was foggy, and my stomach didn't know what the heck was going on. You know, though I could move around, sightsee, and do things, I definitely felt pretty dazed and confused. How do you get rid of jet lag fast? So the quickest way to get rid of jet lag is to acclimate to the new schedule as soon as possible. 
That means eating at their meal times, going to bed when other folks in the area are going to bed, you know, trying to train your body to get on that schedule. But if you know that you're gonna be going to a place for a long extended period of time, maybe you're moving somewhere for six months or a year or forever, you can start training your body even before you travel. You know, figure out what their schedule is and try to apply it to your current time zone. It won't help to fix jet lag entirely, but it will help to get you ready for the new schedule that you'll encounter there. How long does it take to recover from jet lag? Now, this is gonna vary from person to person, and it's gonna depend on you know your body's biology as well as how far ahead or behind you're traveling from your natural time zone. But in my experience, it usually takes two to four days um, for the effects to wear off entirely. But some folks report that it takes up to an entire week. So, you know, if you know that you're sort of a sensitive person or you don't sleep that well anyway, it may take you longer than someone who sleeps really well naturally. And lastly, bum bum ba da. Um, why is jet lag worse from east to west? Ooh, this is a great question. Um, and it basically comes down to the fact that when you travel east, you're moving ahead of your natural time zone. And as we discussed earlier, this means that you're advancing your internal clock and you're essentially losing hours. You'll gain them back, but in the short term, it can make for some pretty serious exhaustion. Well, folks, this about does it for our guide to jet lag. For more educational resources and fun sleep content, make sure to go to sleepopolis.com and subscribe to the Sleepopolis YouTube channel. All right, until next time, happy dreaming.